praying like that. It sits up here. In a Asian wisdom, the Dantian or the Hara is, I think, more appropriate in a way. They very much focus on this area, the solar plexus we did in the martial arts as well. Because this is the seat of the diaphragm. Now, in some ways, you could use this as much as you use the lower abdomen, because as you pull the stomach in, you feel like the diaphragm is opening this way and exhaling. It's like a little trampoline. As you pull the stomach in, it gently pulls the diaphragm down and stretches your back. So if you just make a cross leg position or a half lotus or a full lotus, whatever you fancy doing, place the thumbs in your abdomen, tuck your bum in slightly, close your eyes. As I mentioned, I can't iterate enough that the back of the throat ought to remain soft as a counter principle to the engagement. So you wanted to look at it more folklore the Hatha Yoga, they have the idea of the sun moon principle. And the sun is obviously the abdomen, it's a heating active principle, and the passive principle is the back of the throat. More recently, there are studies of tensegrity um, in scientific terms, and the idea that your body is like a tent and it's held together by the back of the throat. So, if you can release this area, you find that a lot of the tension drops down through the neck and starts to affect the shoulder blades, they go off, and then the hip goes out to try and rebalance that. So you can chase it from any place, but keeping softness around the back of the throat, very beneficial. Imagine you're softening the gaze, half smiling from the back of the throat can help with the feeling of just that, that you know, kind of, looks very <laughs> smug. <laughs> now, push the stomach. As you inhale, so you've reorientated the hips, you've balanced the spine, trying to feel like you're a basin or a flower pot, and you're just growing your stem up from the base of the hips, keeping the chin tucked in. So when often people do the prana yama aspect of the end, <coughs> the chin goes like this, which obviously makes you into a kafotic. Chin goes into the throat, the head goes back like this. So you just push the chin inwards, not downwards, but certainly the neck never goes up. Often the, I try and do loads of things at the same time. So oftentimes, especially with the twists, the head goes up, in which case you've lost it. Keep your chin in when you twist, because that allows the body to roll one way at the top, but the other way at the bottom. So when you're twisting, and I'm not doing something on twist, but I'll just show you, you want to go both ways. So it's like you're wringing a dishcloth out. If you let the head go, you don't get the other side of that ring. So you don't twist efficiently. Efficiently, keep the chin in, place the hands, soften the hands, touching the fingertips, Imagine pressing the fingertips engages the stomach. If you can't feel that properly, in fact, you can all do this. Place the thumb just below the navel. Now, as you push in gently, you can feel that you're lifting from the back of the armpits, not pulling the shoulder back. Then exhale, just let it out. It's like a transistor, you just put a little bit of force. Pulling the belly draws the diaphragm down. And exhale, let it out again. And now you feel, and I'll do this tomorrow in the back bends, there's this sense of curling up here one way and curling down here the other way. So lifting up and lifting down. So it's a feeling of winching the chest, looping the shoulder blades. There's many different ways people say it. Finally, so you feel like the abdomen is used in a gentle manner and the force of the body is actually the force of the mnemonic idea of the diaphragm. Now, open your eyes, you come forward and